gosh, I want to get better at bass, but I only have 10 minutes per day. What do I do? As I went to confidently bestow my wisdom, I realized I didn't know. I spent over a week testing exercises with Justin. There was this one that trained fretting and speed but lacked versatility. No. And this one was equal parts versatile and soul-crushingly boring. This one didn't work either. I still don't know what to practice. Nope, nope, nope. But then, then we found it. One thing you can do, whether you're beginner or advanced. An exercise that fixes flying fretting fingers, increases speed, and uncovers the secrets of the neck. An exercise so stupidly simple that a beginner may utilize it, but so flexible that even advanced players will reap its rewards. An exercise that will help you progress every single day with just 10 minutes of practice. One exercise to rule them all. Don't get these benefits if you don't do the exercise right. So in this video, I'll take you through five levels of nailing this exercise so you ditch your bad habits and get the most out of your 10 minute routine. There's a mistake that even advanced players make that this exercise exposes. Fixing it will train up your shifting and help you not get lost on the neck. But to explain what this mistake actually is, I need to show you the basic level of the exercise. Starting on your middle finger, we're gonna use basically a one finger per fret approach. So middle, index, middle, ring, pinky, then same thing again, index, middle, ring, pinky, middle, index, now little shift, pinky, ring, middle, index, pinky, back to middle. So did you notice anything that felt weird compared to other exercises you've done? That little shift, right? And that leads us to the mistake that many bassists make, missing notes by only thinking in three or four fret positions. Here's the thing, we usually think in four fret chunks on bass because most of us have four fingers on our fretting hand. Most. But the strings of the bass are tuned five frets apart. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. So you get one, two, three, four, five notes before you get A, which is the same as the next string over. And that applies everywhere on the bass. If I'm trying to go from G to C, you go G, G sharp, A, A sharp, good so far. But if you cut over to C right now, you miss B, which is the next note before C. This is why a full position on bass is actually five frets. That's the secret to not getting lost and missing notes. So this exercise gives you a window into thinking in five fret chunks, in this case from frets two to six. But that doesn't mean you have to make a mega stretch. You can just micro shift like this, meaning a teeny little shift within the five fret position. If you're a beginner, your first goal is to play this exercise smoothly as quarter notes at 100 BPM. Intermediately, you can aim for 150 BPM, and more advanced would be 200 BPM and, and beyond. Once you learn the basic notes of an exercise like this, you might think you're done. But what I show you in the next level is the difference between senselessly repeating a drill and actually leveling up your technique every time you do it. There are a million bass exercise videos and books out there, but the truth is none of them will do you much good if you're making this next mistake. See if you can spot how I'm sucking at this exercise. It sounded passable, right? But if you look closely, or not even that closely at my hand, you can see that my fingers are flying all over the place, which wastes energy, makes your hands extra tired, and increases your risk of injury. Plus, you'll sound like clunky and uncoordinated as you try to increase your speed. I am bass teacher. This is a great exercise to work on flying fingers because we have ascending fingerings going from index towards pinky, and also descending fingerings going back down. The first place you gotta watch for flying fingers is on those ascending fingerings, index, middle, ring, pinky. You wanna be adding fingers without subtracting the one you just used. So I keep the index down as I add the middle, then keep those down, add the ring, keep those down, add the pinky, then same thing again. And if you need to micro shift to do that, you can, you don't need to be in mega alien stretch mode. And then the other spot is the descending fingerings. You wanna keep all four fingers down when you're on the pinky, and then just subtract the fingers that you don't need anymore. So going from pinky to middle, you lift the pinky and the ring, but you keep the middle and the index down, then lift the middle, then same idea to close out the exercise. If you try to get this all perfect immediately, you won't, because fixing flying fingers takes a ton of time. It is good and noble to want to start on bass with all good habits and no bad habits, but the reality is you're going to have some flying fretting fingers, and there's just nothing you can do about it besides work on it gradually as you go. So here are two tips to avoid overwhelm as you do that. Tip one, take it super, super slow at first. Don't even like try to play 
in rhythm at a tempo. Just go one note after the other, really focusing on that fretting hand coordination. And once you can do that smoothly to your satisfaction, you can find a tempo and start working up to your BPM target. Tip two, chunk it. Start with a small handful of notes, like maybe those first five notes, and just work on that in slow motion as much as you need to until it feels smooth and comfortable. And then move on to the next chunk, and the next chunk, and then you can start piecing them together. Your BPM target before you move on to level three is the same target from level one, but now with your fingers not flying all over the place. So for beginners, that's 100 BPM, intermediate 150, advanced 200, and beyond! You furiously focused on flawless fretting fingers, which means your plucking pot is probably positively preposterous. So let's fix that. This exercise won't really work as a full 10 minute practice routine unless you focus on your plucking hand too. And you could easily miss this, especially at slow tempos where you could just pluck it all with one finger. Let's be real. But if you don't use the right fingering, you won't be able to build speed and you'll be stuck playing slow songs forever. A bassist is never too slow, nor is he too fast. He plays precisely the speed he means to. So there are two ways you could approach plucking this and they're both great. Option one is strict alternating, which would be just plucking index middle, index middle all the way through, super simple and scalable. Option two would be incorporating raking, which means you break your alternating pattern if you can reuse a plucking finger on the next string down. So the two places you could do that would be coming down from the octave right here, coming from the G string to the D string, you can reuse a finger there, and then coming down from the D string to the A string, you could reuse a finger there from E to D. Since your plucking hand had been neglected thus far, sorry buddy, you might need to drop your speed back in order to play this with good plucking. So find that speed, however slow it is, and then work your way back up to your goal. And beyond! See how simple this is? I told you this was the exercise to rule them all. Just don't fall too in love with it or things can start to get weird. After all, why shouldn't I click like and subscribe to Base Bus? If you stopped here, this would be a great exercise to help you improve your speed, dexterity, and flying fingers. But if you don't understand the why of these note choices, you're missing half the equation. And it's the half that'll actually make you a better musician, not just bass operator. Like if Frodo was trying to take the ring to Mordor, but he didn't understand why he was trying. Okay, never mind. This isn't a real analogy. I just wanted to talk about Lord of the Rings again. See, this exercise might seem complicated and like it has lots of notes, but the reality is it only has three core notes, root, fifth, and octave. I explain all the science of roots and fifths in another video here on YouTube, and I cover how those notes are used in iconic bass lines in way more detail in my Beginner to Badass course over at BassBuzz.com. You have my iconic bass lines. And my Beginner to Badass course. But for now, just know that roots, fifths, and octaves are the core anchor of tons of great bass lines, and every other note we play in this exercise can be explained as a walk-up or walk-down pattern, which are super juicy ways to make your playing sound more interesting. So there's root, fifth, octave, fifth, starting each bar, and three different walking patterns that juice everything up. Pattern one is the chromatic walk up to the fifth. Chromatic just means we're going in half steps, not worrying about the scale, so we do three half steps leading into the fifth, and then we do the same chromatic walk up into the octave. Pattern two is the chromatic walk down. Again, chromatic means we're not worrying about a scale, we're just doing three half steps leading into the fifth, and you notice that's a weird looking shape, but it's actually just three half steps played across the strings. And the final pattern, pattern three, is the scale walk down where we are using the C major scale to walk down back to C. By the way, this bass line is in a bluesy context in this video, but one does not simply walk these patterns in blues alone. You can use them for jazzy walking bass. You can use them for like gospel shout lines. I'm not qualified to play gospel, but it's fun. And you can use it for the beginning of Smoke on the Water. Since we've just added theory understanding to what you were already doing in this level, your BPM targets and stuff aren't gonna change. Just see if you can play through the exercise, keeping that root fifth octave theory stuff in mind. So you think root, walk to the fifth, walk to the octave, walk to the fifth, walk to the root. If you can hold that context in your head, while you're playing this, it's really gonna help you with your walking bass outside of this exercise. So you got the basics of what we're doing, but most songs don't just sit on one chord like this forever, right? So it's time to learn to apply these in a more real world context and explore the advanced variations. 
most songs have chord changes, meaning the guitar's home bass might be here, but then it's here, before going back here. As a bass player, a big part of your job is connecting chords together smoothly. So instead of this, you get this. So if you want this exercise to really make you a better musician, you need to be able to use these patterns on moving root notes. I'll give you an intermediate version of this, as well as a crazy, full-on, super advanced version, so you can test your metal. Metal. Metal? Metal. What a weird word. For the intermediate exercise, we're just gonna add one more root note, moving the exercise up a string to F. First of all, we're gonna start in C, but on the E string instead of the A string, so now you can get to F without having to change position. So the first three bars are identical, but now the fourth bar is gonna get some changes because the next target note has changed. Now you wanna to get to F, so you need to do a walking pattern that leads to F. And we'll use a scale walk up. So you got three beats to get there. We landed on G, and now we get beats two, three, and four to get us to F on the next beat one. So you just pop down three scale notes and go C, D, E, and then land on F. And now you repeat the exercise up a string starting on F. And the fourth bar we change again to lead us back to C nicely. We'll do a variation on the scale walk down that resolves to F on beat four, tying up that chord with a little bow, and then just jump down to C, rinse and repeat. All the same level ups from before apply here. Watch for fretting fingers, check your plucking, and aim for whatever BPM target is a good stretch for you. And if you're ready to take this exercise to the max, there's a super advanced version as a PDF in the description where you'll simply walk through all 12 notes as root notes until your head explodes. One does not simply walk through all 12 root notes. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just felt like we're talking about walking patterns and I have this little Lord of the Rings thing. I felt like I had to make that joke at least twice. I'm sorry. Like I said, you could just mindlessly play this exercise, but it's not gonna be very useful unless you go slow enough to actually progress through these levels. If you go too fast, you're not gonna nail the flying fingers, you're gonna mess up the plucking pattern, you're gonna miss the theory and just generally get super stuck. And I talk more about the importance of not practicing too fast in my video on bass mistakes that are slowing you down. So check that out right now to make sure you're optimizing your practice routine and not developing any bad habits. I don't know what to practice. Then why are you subscribed to Bass Buzz? Okay.